Hold it, hold it. Listen to me. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most memorable instances of people getting heated while on live television. Well, if I have to teach you how to be a reporter, Ali, I'll do that later. Number 30. A Lesson in Weather Safety If there's snow and ice on your vehicle, you should remove it as effectively as possible before driving. We're going to break down the science behind wiping the snow off of your car. We know that might sound like we're stating the obvious, but apparently not every motorist is aware of this. In this memorable rant, KTVI meteorologist in St. Louis, Derek Kevra, passively aggressively gives a demonstration in how to use a snow brush and ice scraper. Once you finish one side of the car, you're going to continue on to the next side. He says this is inspired by witnessing drivers the previous evening who apparently didn't understand this. His sharp tongue makes for an amusing diatribe, but it also serves as an important reminder of road safety. Now I know, I know, it seems like a lot, and you might think that you'll never be able to do it, but I promise if you follow those simple steps, you too will be able to clear the snow off of your car. Hopefully, at least one of those drivers saw this and changed their neglectful ways. Number 29. Practice. Say the word practice in front of a basketball fan and they'll instantly hear the voice of legendary NBA player Allen Iverson in their head. We sitting here, I supposed to be the franchise player and we in here talking about practice. After a heartbreaking loss from the Philadelphia 76ers to the Boston Celtics, Iverson spoke at a press conference where he was clearly crushed by the defeat. Things took a turn when a reporter brought up 76ers coach Larry Brown's criticism of Iverson for missing team practice practices. Not the game. We're talking about practice. Defiantly challenging arguments about the necessity of his attendance, Iverson used the word practice 22 times. What are we talking about? Practice? We're talking about practice, man. <laughs> Though this portion of the conference is by far the most infamous and memed, it should be noted that it also ventures into more serious territory, like the murder of his best friend, Rashawn Lanchford, the previous year. Number 28. Jean-Claude Van Damme is sick of boring interviews. Being a celebrity means doing many interviews over the course of your career, and answering the same questions again and again. I'm looking to be as natural as possible when I come to a strip. The frustration of this evidently got to Belgian action star Jean-Claude Van Damme. Sorry guys, I cannot do this anymore. During a satellite interview with Australian morning show Sunrise, the muscles from Brussels expressed his frustration about being asked the same questions for more than two decades, such as about his Street Fighter co-star and pop icon Kylie Minogue and his exercise regimen. The press, they've been asking me the same question for the last 25 years. Kylie, how's your training, how's your this, how's your that? Before long, he's removing his microphone, swearing profusely and storming off. If there's one word you can't use to describe this interview, it's boring. Number 27. MSNBC reporter accosted. Reporting on a hurricane is stressful enough without targeted harassment. We saw postal workers going out delivering mail this morning. Just a couple of minutes ago, people were walking their dogs. They're back on the beach right now. While reporting on Hurricane Ida in Gulfport, Mississippi, MSNBC correspondent Shaquille Brewster was confronted by a man who ran from his white pickup truck to launch into a furious tirade. I think we even have a random person going around. You know, I'm going to turn this way because, you know, we deal with some people every once in a while. But What exactly he's saying is unclear, but it's clear he's not looking to have a friendly chat. Brewster, showing calm throughout the ordeal, throws back to anchor Craig Melvin right as the man gets in his face. We have a person yeah. who needs yeah. a little help right now. The perpetrator was later identified as Ohio man Benjamin Eugene Dagley, and arrested. Thankfully, Brewster made it out of this incident unscathed. Number 26. Sergio Ramos tells off rude fan. There's never a good time to heckle a professional athlete, but after a loss is arguably the worst occasion. Peta la gente. Estamos hablando. Following a 2-0 loss to Athletic Bilbao, Sevilla player Sergio Ramos spoke with a reporter, only to find himself interrupted by a fan in the stands. Ramos initially tried to ignore the jeers, but when the heckler refused to let up, he went for broke, angrily telling them to shut up. Respeta a la gente y cállate ya, anda. Ramos, who has been known for losing his temper and getting physical on other occasions, mostly manages to hold in his rage and move on. But we don't blame him for being upset about such disrespectful behavior. I think he answered in a very 
polite way, to, uh, to, to be honest. Number 25, substitute weather reporter. Mark Woodley typically serves as sports anchor for Iowa's KWWL station. However, during a blizzard with athletic events canceled, he was tasked with getting up early and out in the cold. What better time to ask the sports guy to come in about five hours normally, uh, earlier than he would normally wake up, go stand out in the wind and the snow and the cold and tell other people not to do the same. Needless to say, Woodley was not pleased about the circumstances. Standing outside in freezing weather with snow still falling, he makes us feel like we're out right there with him. Got good news and, and I've got bad news. The, the good news is that I can still feel my face right now. The bad news is I kind of wish I couldn't. After his rant went viral, Woodley returned to the weather beat the following month. Fortunately, the second try was far more successful. You know, you all put me out here for the second time in a month to try and torture me, but the joke's on you. It's about 60 degrees warmer than it was back then. But he undoubtedly prefers the comfort of working from a properly heated studio. Number 24, Michael Malone lashes out at reporter. Players aren't the only ones who can get irritable after post-loss press conferences. It can also affect their coaches. Did you feel like there was anything that you guys got away from offensively in that stretch after you reached that point? I'll have to go back and watch the film. After a stunning Game 7 comeback that saw the Minnesota Timberwolves knock the Denver Nuggets out of the NBA playoffs, Nuggets coach Michael Malone is clearly having trouble even beginning to process the loss. His responses are terse and he's avoiding eye contact. How hard is it just to absorb a loss like this after, after going ahead by 20? Next question, man. One reporter's question in particular rubs him the wrong way. Malone gets vocally upset, expressing his frustration with, quote, stupid ass questions. Stupid ass questions. Malone did, however, reach out the next day to apologize to the reporter, Bennett Durando, for how he responded to his question. Number 23, anchor stands up to body shamer. The nerve of some people. On Friday, I received the following email from a lacrosse man with the subject line, Community Responsibility, and it reads as follows. After Wisconsin News anchor Jennifer Livingston received an email from a viewer criticizing her appearance, she received an outpouring of support. She addressed the matter on the air, telling the instigator that his comments are uncalled for and tactless. She also ties the matter into the greater problem of harassment, particularly how it affects school-age children. It is a major issue in the lives of young people today, and as the mother of three young girls, it scares me to death. While Livingston acknowledges that his words didn't break her confidence, that's not the case for everybody. The internet has become a weapon. Our schools have become a battleground, and this behavior is learned. The man responsible, Kenneth Krauss, later said he didn't intend to offend her. Yeah, we're not buying that. Number 22, amusing anchor spat. Coworkers can become like family, and like all families, arguments are bound to happen every once in a while. I don't know I what you're talking about. I said we're going to do about. something on the computer uh, for did, the, did for you the see, last did story. Did you see me? I was reading the news there. During a broadcast for WGN Morning News in Chicago, anchor Robin Baumgarten chastised co-anchor Larry Potash about a missed story. Before long, the two are bickering like an old married couple. And now you're looking at me like I'm crazy. Like I'm just making it up. In isolation, this clip might seem to suggest that Baumgarten and Potash have a particularly contentious working relationship. However, an extended version of the incident, as well as other moments from their co-anchoring tenure, shows this is more friends giving each other a hard time than anything resembling animosity. I can't take it anymore. Number 21, Teresa Judai storms off. At this point, Real Housewives of New Jersey star Teresa Judice might be better known for her and her husband Joe's legal troubles than for her reality TV career. During an interview with Access Hollywood Live, Judice was asked about the possibility of Joe being deported back to Italy. Do you worry that it's the end of your family unit as you know it? Because there is all of this talk that Joe could be deported since he's an Italian citizen. Do you think about that? Judice immediately refuses to respond and proceeds to call the question, quote, really rude. I think, you know, that's, I don't think that's something you should be asking. Well, everybody's talking about it and it could be a reality. Yeah, no. She then gets up and storms off, leaving behind her co-star, Melissa Gorga. Of course, longtime fans of the Housewives franchise know that this is nothing compared to how heated she can get. You are f***ing engaged 19 times, you f***ing stupid bitch! Number 20. 
frankly just bullshit. In late February 2020, convicted Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich appeared on CNN to talk with Anderson Cooper. Blagojevich was serving 14 years in prison for soliciting bribes, a sentence later commuted by President Donald Trump on February 18, 2020. Blagojevich is playing up his prison time, referring to himself as a political prisoner and comparing himself to Nelson Mandela. Today, and that Sir, is the portraying, shocking fact. I, I, I just got to stop you. I'm sorry. As someone who's worked in South Africa yes. and saw apartheid, the idea that you are comparing yourself to uh, somebody who has actually been railroaded by a, an apartheid system um, is just nuts. Cooper rightfully calls this comparison offensive, but that's not all. As the interview goes on, Cooper grows increasingly resentful and impatient with Blagojevich's statements, and he eventually refers to his alternate universe of facts as bullshit. You do have an obligation to at least admit what you did wrong, and you refuse to do that, and you're creating a whole new alternate universe of facts, and that may be big in politics today, but it's still, frankly, just bullshit. This isn't the first time that Cooper has spoken his mind. Back on Anderson Live, he called the so-called human Barbie a dreadful person and cut the interview short. I, I, I try to be really polite to all my guests. I just think you're dreadful, and I, I honestly don't want to talk to you anymore, so I'm just going to stop. Number 19, Dan Marino's Freak Out. In the 2000s, former Miami Dolphins quarterback Dan Marino co-hosted weekly football talk show Inside the NFL. When talking about golfing with Terrell Buckley, he had a wild freakout that came completely without warning. Playing golf, he told me that defense is blo- uh, God damn it. <laughs> After stumbling over his words, Marino slammed his fists into the table, startling those around him. Marino even seems to have caught production off guard with his little tantrum, judging by the camera's rapid movements, zoom-ins, and zoom-outs. Hey, we all word up our messes sometimes. Uh, mess up our words. Jesus. Number 18. Danny Dyer on David Cameron English actor Danny Dyer is often typecast as the tough guy in movies and TV shows. Now we know why. So what's happened to that David Cameron oh. who called it on? <laughs> Let's be fair. Oh. I think you're referring no, to no, our no, former no, Prime no, Minister. No. While appearing on Good Evening Britain, Dyer began passionately discussing prior UK Prime Minister David Cameron and the issues surrounding Brexit. Where is the geezer? I think he should be held accountable for it. You know what? He should be held you know what? accountable for it. His rant included several profanities and various colorful names for David Cameron, like geezer and twat. His passionate comments garnered some chuckles, while the opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn managed to keep a straight face. When he was done, he sat back in his chair, crossed his arms, and shook his head in disappointment. So he's not a fan of David Cameron then? Number 17. Weatherman's Cold Response We all get a case of the winter blues sooner or later. It affects some people worse than others, even the meteorologists. Predicting the weather accurately is a multi-billion dollar industry that can affect businesses and literally save lives. So there is a lot of pressure on weather forecasters, which might explain why they sometimes snap. In 2018, a Grand Rapids, Michigan meteorologist named Gary Frank let loose on one particularly cold day, venting not as much about the cold weather, but the reactions and expectations of his co-workers for constantly complaining about it. Well, because you guys are dragging me down. You guys keep... <laughs> Well, every time I get done with the seven day, you guys are like, oh, gosh, oh, every time. His sarcastic rant includes mimicking his coworkers' disappointed size and suggesting maybe he should just misrepresent the weather to be warmer to make everyone happy. It's actually refreshing to see such human moments like this on the news. Doesn't matter what time I come on, 4.30, 5.30, 6.30, and then you expect me to be chipper for five straight hours. It's miserable. Number 16. Sam the Cooking Guy Calls for Silence Hey, many of us get flustered and frustrated while cooking. Fortunately, our freakouts are not caught on live television. So tuna. we're making a Why tuna? Why all of it in We're there. making a tuna? Tuna is the second thing we have in our house. Can I talk? While appearing on Today with Kathy Lee Gifford and Hoda Kotb, Sam the Cooking Guy grew tired of the host's constant interjections and firmly told them to pipe down. Pay attention one minute. Sam realized his mistake when his outburst was met with a painfully awkward silence, and he tried alleviating the awkwardness with some smiles and jokes. I was lying about your eyebrows. I think they're shabby. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Okay. Onion. Uh, I don't even know what it got. Cucumber. Unfortunately, that was an error he simply could not fix and the rest of the segment proceeded rather coldly, with Gifford seeming particularly defensive. 
We take some feta cheese. I love to buy the block feta cheese. I can hear the crew back there going, this guy, it's his last day here for sure. <laughs> They've been around a long time because they don't talk to us way, like that. By the way, can I point? Number 15, Mar kicks out conspiracy theorists. Live audiences are typically well behaved, but sometimes you get the clown who just wants to make noise. We'd be able to attack this very bad disease that's attacking us. <laughs> While Bill Maher was talking with U.S. Representative Sheila Jackson Lee, conspiracy theorists started loudly yelling from the audience. You know Boy, sometimes here at CBS, I wish the sound wasn't working. At first, Lee and Mar simply looked at them in amusement and cracked some jokes at their behalf. But then they kept going. This prompted Mar to stand up, colorfully inquire about the security, and personally run over to the conspiracy theorists to kick them out himself. This was met with loud cheers from the studio audience, so we think they were just as fed up with the troublemakers. I'll kick your ass out of here, too. Number 14, Anchor Untethered. Back in 2009, Drew Smith, a news anchor for SNN News 6 in Sarasota, Florida, had very little patience for poorly worded transcripts. After struggling to get through a story, Smith sighs in frustration and hangs his head in shame. In her will, Smith also intentionally omitted to provide for her spouse and other heirs, including future spouses and children, and other descendants. They will... After a brief pause, Smith brandishes his copy of the script and asks, Who writes this stuff? And asks either the crew or the viewers at home if they are as confused as he is. Are you guys lost like I am? Before continuing on, Smith seemingly answers his earlier question by stating, quote, Some intern at NBC News Channel writes this crap. But we get it. Poorly worded news is confusing for everyone, and quality control is important. Some intern at NBC News Channel writes this crap. Number 13, Alexi Lawless speaks his mind. Sports commentators aren't one to mince words. If a performance sucks, they're gonna tell you about it. And Alexi Lawless, a former soccer star and pundit for Fox Sports, certainly told us about it. It's dark days indeed, but this is a time for leaders to step up. Uh, and so to the, to, to, to the supposed leaders, I will say this, all right. While covering a match between the Seattle Sounders and LA Galaxy, Lawless unleashes a barrage of insults against the national United States soccer team. He singles out specific people, including Tim Howard, Jeff Cameron, and Clint Dempsey, and says that those that he didn't single out, quote, don't even warrant a mention. Tim Howard, Tim, the Belgium game ended three years ago. We need you to save the ball now. Jeff Cameron. Clean it up or let's get someone who will. Clint Dempsey, yeah, you're a national team legend. Now we need you to be a national team leader. And that's before calling them all, quote, soft, underperforming, tattooed millionaires. We don't know if this is tough love or just straight up mean. You're going to continue to be a bunch of soft, underperforming, tattooed millionaires? You are a soccer generation that has been given everything. You are a soccer generation who is on the verge of squandering everything. Number 12, let me talk, Carol. If this list proves anything, it's that meteorologists are hanging on by a thread. This outburst concerns Chad Myers, the severe weather expert for CNN. Okay, that so is lower Chad, pressure, Chad, but Chad, Camille, Chad, but Chad, let me trans talk, Carol. Translate that for us. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Well, if you would let me talk. While discussing Hurricane Katrina, anchor Carol Costello interrupts Myers and asks him to clarify the complex and technical terminology that he's using. Myers proceeds to yell, let me talk, Carol, and throws his papers on the ground in frustration. Costello and Myers both laugh the incident off, and Myers states that he was just having fun with Costello. It seems clear that they do this simply to diffuse the palpable tension, because Myers was obviously not having fun. He is stressed the heck out. All right, Carol. thank you, Chad. No, all right, just having fun with you this morning. <laughs> I know. Right. It's a stressful time, it I is. know. Number 11, Andrew Dice Clay fights back. Live TV and comedians rarely make for a safe combination, especially comedians known for their provocative humor. It's ridiculous. I come on CNN and the guy don't even know what he's talking about. Go ahead. When Andrew Dice Clay appeared on CNN, the anchor opened that Clay was a headline guy and asked him what it was like running a gym. You were you were a headline guy. I'm and still then, a headline guy. You know what you, I mean? For a while you popped out. Now you're coming back. For I a while, back, for a while you were I actually do, you, you, know were running, I mean? you were running a gym. Tell us about that. Running a gym? Weren't you Why running you a gym at some point? You're supposed to be a news guy. The comments greatly upset Clay, who stated that he is still a headline guy and never ran a gym. 
Following that, Clay launched into a tirade that involved numerous F-bombs and the very loud and very verbal disapprovement of the production. You, you know what, go back. yourself, you know what? All I'm right. The whole network. We'll go back to uh, talking about art Arnie. Our personal favorite bit has to be the anchor trying to segue into the next segment while Clay yells and swears off camera. Number 10, Weatherman flips out. This one was a question of priorities. We have viewers complaining already. Just go back to the show. No, we're not going back to the show, folks. This is a dangerous situation. In Dayton, Ohio, a local broadcast of The Bachelorette was interrupted by an emergency weather statement regarding an impending tornado. Midway through the broadcast, weatherman Jamie Simpson checked social media and saw that viewers were complaining about the interruption. I'm sick and tired of people complaining about this. Our job here is to keep people safe, and that is what we're going to do. This sent Simpson over the edge. He yelled at the viewers at home, went on a minute-long tirade, and called their reaction pathetic. Stop. Okay, just stop right now. It's not. I'm, st I'm done with you people. I really am. This is pathetic. Viewers were not happy, and Simpson wasn't happy that they weren't happy. Basically, no one was happy. Number 9. Burning with Frustration This is a hot one. Okay, not literally, but there is fire involved. Mika Brzezinski is the co-host of MSNBC's Morning Joe, a weekday morning political talk show. Back in 2007, Brzezinski grew frustrated with the constant coverage of Paris Hilton. Hold yeah. on a second, I'm gonna oh, make a point. Lord. We're not covering this, what else all right? Is in there. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm Easy. done Easy. with the Paris Easy. Hilton no, 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 story. No, no, no. I, 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 I need some dude. She attempts to set her news documents on fire, saying, quote, I'm done with the Paris Hilton story. When her co-anchor takes the lighter away, Brzezinski gets up and throws the papers into a nearby paper shredder. Three, this two. is my Paris Hilton and story. And oh, what a statement. That what is a statement, statement about the bye state bye. of journalism you know, in our you country. Have, you have changed the world, Mika yeah. Brzezinski. Yes, How can you give us At least my world. When reflecting on the moment for a 10-year anniversary special, co-anchor Willie Geist called it, quote, a symbolic moment for the show, in that Brzezinski was refusing to air and discuss such trivial matters of celebrity. This is the way things have sort of been done. These are the things you've seen talked about in the morning, yeah. they're literally going into a shredder and we're starting something new. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Mika, it's, it's, it, Mika got called to the front office and, and they were going to yell at her. Uh, no, I did get yelled at. Number eight, Charlo Green quits on air. This rant by Alaska's KTVA anchor Charlo Green went viral. Now everything you heard is why I, the actual owner of the Alaska Cannabis Club, will be dedicating all of my energy toward fighting for freedom and fairness, which begins with legalizing marijuana here in Alaska. After reporting on the Alaska Cannabis Club, Green shockingly revealed that she was the owner of the Cannabis Club and quit on live TV. And as for this job, well, not that I have a choice, but I quit. Her resignation involved a lengthy speech, a well-timed F-bomb, and a dramatic walk-off camera. This left the other KTVA anchor stunned and literally speechless as she tried to recover from Green's colorful on-air resignation. We'll be, we'll be right back. I mean, uh, pardon for us. The clip subsequently went viral, and Green found herself a bit of a champion within the marijuana industry. Unfortunately, her club was raided by police in 2016, and Green was slapped with a felony conviction and a $10,000 fine. Number 7. Ben Affleck Gets Worked Up Back in October 2014, Ben Affleck appeared on the talk show Real Time with Bill Maher alongside author and podcast host Sam Harris, and it didn't take long for the fireworks to really get going. The discussion veers towards the subjects of radical Islam and Islamophobia, and battle lines are quickly drawn. You're saying that Islamophobia is not a real thing. That if you're critical of something... It... Well, it's not a real thing when we do it. Right. <laughs> well, well, no, it no, really no, isn't. I, I'm not denying not... That, that certain people are bigoted against Muslims as people. That's, right. And that's a that's problem. big of you. But the... But why have, are you so hostile to, about this it's, it's gross. It's racist. Mar claims that Islam is the only religion that acts like the mafia, and Harris says that Islam but why this is the mother load of bad ideas. The Oscar winner then goes off on the two men, calling their assertions gross, racist, and ugly things to say. All this while sitting back in his chair in frustration and muttering Jesus Christ under his breath. So suffice it to say, he didn't agree with their opinions. Like, you well, criticize the people who are doing it, not the Philippines. You know what I mean? Well, what if the people are Filipino yeah. kid lives on the street from you would have nothing to do with that? Number six, Sue Simmons drops an F-bomb. There's something really funny about an otherwise professional news anchor breaking character and yelling out an F-bomb. At 11, pay more at the grocer, but getting less will tell you how to get the most. The f*** are you doing? 
After reading through the news teaser for WNBC, Simmons could loudly be heard cursing off camera as the footage was rolling. Simmons was reportedly yelling at her co-anchor, Chuck Scarborough, who was distracted by his computer. Unfortunately, Simmons didn't realize that the segment was live. I'm truly sorry. It was a mistake on my part, and I sincerely apologize. She later apologized to the viewers for her outburst, but really, more people were probably amused than offended. Seeing that boat drift in silence following her F-bomb is just comedic gold. Number 5. R. Kelly vs. Gail King Even though this interview wasn't aired live, it was presented exactly as filmed. R. Kelly has long been the subject of numerous sexual assault allegations. Robert. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this In March 2019, Kelly appeared on CBS This Morning with Gail King to discuss the allegations and the recent documentary, Surviving R. Kelly. Kelly grew increasingly emotional and frustrated as the interview progressed, culminating in him screaming right into the camera. This is not about music! I'm trying to have a relationship with my kids, and I can't do it! He then stood up and continued to shout, pounding on his chest. It didn't end there, as his tirade continued for almost another minute. Number 4. Walking Away from Bill O'Reilly Please welcome Bill O'Reilly! And here we have another disagreement arising over religion and extremism. Back in 2010, political commentator Bill O'Reilly appeared on The View to promote his book Pinheads and Patriots, Where You Stand in the Age of Obama. The discussion turns towards an Islamic community center called Park 51, then scheduled to be built near Ground Zero. And let me break this to you. 70% of Americans don't want that mosque down there, Resentful. so don't give me the wee bit. O'Reilly claims without proof that, quote, 70% of Americans don't want that and that it's inappropriate, quote, because Muslims killed us on 9-11. killed us on 9-11? Whoopi yells, oh my god, shoots back in her seat and swears at O'Reilly before she and Joy Behar storm off the set. This is anything but scripted, just a real impassioned reaction. You're outraged about Muslims killed us on 9-11. Number 3. Jim Ryan vs. Dick Oliver This legendary argument took place on July 19, 2001. Good Day New York anchorman Jim Ryan is watching a report from Dick Oliver on a landlord-tenant dispute. It's pretty normal, everyday stuff. Until it isn't. All right, it's back to you, Jim. Ollie, uh, don't let her go away. This, uh, that, that's, uh, what, does she have a response to that? Is she still there? What's that? Did, did the lady just leave? Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. After Oliver lets his tenant interviewee leave, Ryan chastises him for the quality of his reporting. This results in a bitter and very awkward back and forth on live television, and you can see the tenant cringing and suppressing a laugh in the background. Well, I'll give you lessons on how to become a reporter later no, I'll on. give you some lessons on how to be an editor, because I was your boss once. Yeah, you were, and are no longer. How did that happen? This incident would become so infamous that it inspired Bill Hader's Herb Welch character on Saturday Night Live, with Hader portraying an elderly reporter as combative as he is incompetent. Please just ask the question. Who started this thing? Well, a couple of us actually started. Spill the beans. Number 2. Kanye on Bush Back in 2005, no one knew that rapper extraordinaire Kanye West would become one of the most controversial and outspoken artists of the 21st century. That is, until a concert for hurricane relief. I hate the way they portray us in the media. If you see a black family, it says they're looting. If you see a white family, it says they're looking for food. This was a live benefit concert that was meant to raise money and awareness for the victims of Hurricane Katrina. West was paired with comedian Mike Myers and went off script, and Myers could only stare at him in confusion and nervousness. He knew something was coming, and something indeed came. George Bush doesn't care about black people. West's comment is now legendary, as is Myers' reaction and the hilarious cutaway to Chris Tucker. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mike Tyson Blows His Stack Back in 1992, Mike Tyson was sentenced to six years in prison for the assault of 18-year-old Desiree Washington. 
This topic was brought up years later in 2014, when Tyson was visiting Toronto's CP24 news channel on a promotional tour after meeting with the city's then-mayor Rob Ford. And the mayor, and this is the first time probably in the history of Toronto where the mayor is bigger than the whole, the whole city. You know, he's the biggest celebrity than anybody in the city. Everybody wants to see the mayor. And um, he's a really uh, dynamic character. News anchor Nathan Downer broaches the idea that the mayoral meeting could possibly have interfered with Ford's election race as Tyson is a convicted rapist. I don't have no comment to that, you know, because it's negative and you're being negative. And I, 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 met, I met the mayor right. and nothing they can do about it. And Tyson is not happy. He initially responds in a seemingly controlled manner before utterly and profanely losing his composure multiple times, eventually calling Downer. It's more nerve-wracking to me to hear talking to a rat piece of shit like oh, you. Come on, like. Downer reminds Tyson that they were on live TV, but he doesn't seem to care, like at all. We're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up this interview. Thank you for thank you for coming. In. Did we forget your favorite live TV rant? Let us know in the comments. It's in Revelations, people. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.